This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hey, for those of you that have been watching live, deja vu. Aloha and welcome to Stan the Energy Man on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your humble hydrogen powered host, Stan Osterman, and today's show is a mixed bag of energy topics that remind me of food, specifically a local favorite, fried rice. So today's show is hydrogen fried rice, and I'm getting hungry already because it's going to be 30 minutes till I get to eat, so please help me. Okay, starting off is some catch-up from a show we did two weeks ago with Ryan Wobbins, my favorite electrical engineer. Mr. Nick Fisher queried via Twitter after the show, so are composting toilets legal in residential zones on Oahu? So did I mention somewhere along the line that I'm a fine arts major and Ryan is in fact an electrical engineer? So Ryan, in spite of the fact that he brought up the composting toilets in the first place and not me, brought on this question and neither of us is in a professional position to answer Nick's question accurately. So being the resourceful host that I am, I went right to the source, the City and County of Honolulu Engineering Department via telephone, where I was promptly and courteously referred to the plans and permitting section on the web. They directed me to a Q&A email box, which I sent a, the question from Nick to about composting toilets, and I even added incinerating toilets to the list of possible non-plumbed defecation tools and was immediately acknowledged that they had received my email and I would get a prompt reply. I got the prompt reply on August 29th, nine days later, and it read, composting and incinerator toilets do not comply with the following section of 2006 Uniform Plumbing Code, colon, section 304-0.0, connection to plumbing system required, all plumbing fixtures, drains, apparentices, and appliances, used to receive, and that may be the critical point here, used to receive, or discharge liquid waste or sewage shall be connected properly to the drainage system of buildings or premises. In accordance with the requirements of this code, a building permit is required for installation of toilets. So Nick, I rest my case. Apparently the city feels that any technology that includes the word toilet must be connected to a wastewater system and must be permitted. Even if said toilet, by design, releases nothing into the sewer system. You can't fight City Hall, Nick. In the case of composting toilets, they have you coming and going. That pun is intended. And we'll be keeping, keep trying to find out the real answer. And I'm sorry for the delay, but we'll let you know uh, when we find something out. And we'll face the permitting challenges, other permitting challenges here in Hawaii. All right, next uh, we have last Monday, the 28th, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum hosted the ninth annual Hawaii Clean Energy Day. This is an annual event that this year's theme was Pathways to Clean Transportation. And a big mahalo to Governor Ige, State Senator English, and State Representative Chris Lee for carving some time out of a very busy day over at the Capitol uh, with the transportation legislation being considered to come and spend time with us over at this uh, forum. So thanks also to Think Tech Hawaii's own Jay Fidel and ener the ever energetic Ms. Sharon Moriwaki from the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum for hosting a great day, and thanks to all the behind the scenes folks that made it all look easy. Uh, there are informative guest speakers, and uh, we can actually throw some of the, the pictures up, Robert. Um, there are some inf uh, informative guest speakers from the mainland, two local panels chock full of movers and shakers in the energy uh, uh, world, and bringing everyone up to date on what is really happening in clean transportation across the state. Uh, we can go to the next picture. There's some Teslas there that uh, were shown on display. Uh, we can only put two vehicles in the alleyway, so that's all we could get there. Next photo. That's one of the folks on display. You may recognize that handsome guy as one of my previous guests this uh, past couple of weeks on the show, Mr. Toby Kincaid. Next. There's some of the folks participating, include, uh, including Maria and some folks from Hawaii, Bio, Hawaii Biodiesel and HPF that were there uh, helping organize and put things together. Next. Uh, you might recognize uh, the director of Hawaii State Department of Transportation, one of my personal heroes in state government, Mr. Ford Fujigami. And one of the highlights of the day were awards presented to some of the folks that have worked really hard out in our community. The winners of these awards were for this year, or Biki Hawaii, uh, under the category of collaborative problem solving. 
the State Energy Building Code Council for Energy Efficiency and Conservation, State Senator Kalani English and the Hawaii State Legislature for Energy Policy and Legislation, Hawaiian Electric for Energy Technology, Pacific Biodiesel for Integration Between Sectors, and our own Think Tech Hawaii for Education and Outreach. So I'll take part of that trophy there. And a special order was also presented to Mr. Warren Bollamer, who's our last photo there in the, in the lineup, for his more than two decades of heading the Hawaii Renewable Energy Alliance, founded in 1995 and a significant contributor to the efforts in moving Hawaii to a sustainable and clean future. So it was a really great day, and uh, it was a lot, of, uh, a lot of good dialogue, a lot of good information, and next year you ought to sign up to go and visit that because it was a great, uh, a great group of folks putting some great stuff together for the future of Hawaii. So as a state's hydrogen implementation quarter coordinator, I obviously find, obviously find it important to network with other, other hydrogen heads across the United States and even in other nations. And one of the most valuable resources I have in my hydrogen information quiver is the California Fuel Cell Partnership newsletter sent out by Mr. Keith Malone at the California Fuel Cell Partnership organization. So his link is, I'll spell it out, is a CAFCP.org. So that's CAFCP.org. And you can check out Keith's great work online. He, they also have a Twitter account, Facebook account, and LinkedIn account. And you can uh, go over there and check things out. So I'm going to take a couple deep breaths and read through the long list of what went on in the hydrogen world this month. Okay, I'm going to switch over to my glasses and paper here. The uh, Ballard Company, which makes uh, fuel cells, their latest earnings indicate that the fuel cell companies may be finally hitting the, the uh, economist wall called the Westoff Wall and reached profitability territory. This is the first time in the history of fuel cell manufacturers that a company has approached profitability on an industrial scale that shows that the, the whole industry is trending upward. This, in an economic sense, is a really big deal. There's also a, a story here about Tesla's electric semi-truck, which you get two to 300 miles, which is pretty good for batteries and about probably the limit for a large vehicle to go on batteries, whereas the Nikola One and Toyota's trucks and probably U.S. Hybrid's trucks are closer to between 800 and 1,200 miles of range. Hypersolar announces major breakthroughs to lower the costs of green hydrogen. Ballard Power Fuel Cell Electric Bus achieves 25,000 hours of revenue operation. Why battery packs are winning over hydrogen fuel cells, both in cars and energy in some markets. So we're a full service. We don't just get prejudiced and support hydrogen fuel cells. We support all viewpoints. There's also a, a, a story here on uh, Fukushima pre Prefecture's high on hydrogen for greener society. If you'll remember back in 2011, that prefecture was hit with the Daiichi Fukushima nuclear power plant disaster after they had a tsunami and an earthquake. California led the world in sales of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles in 2017. Air pollution ups stress hormones and alters metabolism. See, we even get into biology in this, uh, in this newsletter. Shaping the hydrogen powered vehicle markets, another great story. Hyundai Mobis built Dedicated plant, a dedicated plant for production of hydrogen car parts. There's also a new era of clean mobility to cut greenhouse gas emissions in Norway and their transportation system using Lloyd's registers, registered expertise in three transformational projects. And it actually lists the, the different projects here, but I'm not going to go through them. Japan looks to broaden hydrogen supply options. California added 1,300 fuel cell hydrogen vehicles over the last year. Let me see, Equinix to install largest deployment of fuel cell fuel cells for the co-location uh, co data center industry. So fuel cells on stationary platforms are supporting the cell phone towers and backup uh, data uh, industry for the cloud and other, other computer programmers uh, needs. Rio Hondo College receives over three quarters of a million dollar grant to develop safety standards for alternative fuel vehicles. 7-Eleven and Toyota team up to introduce fuel cell storage batteries. This is over in Japan, along with another related story which talks about 7-Eleven and Toyota teaming up on delivery trucks to deliver all the products in Japan via hydrogen fuel cell trucks. Let me see, there's a couple letters to the editor. Bloom Power Secure Partnership wins 37 megawatt fuel cell contract. 
uh, young engineers to take part in hydrogen hack. And it keeps on going. Anglo-American swims against the current in backing fuel cells. Hyundai hydrogen fuel cell SUV for 2018 is revealed. And that's going to be exciting. Hyundai is really stepping out in hydrogen fuel cells. Hyundai made a hydrogen fuel cell car that actually looks like a car. I like that, high, that headline. And Hyundai also unveils a new SUV with longer range. Hyundai Motor Company to apply HD map to self-driving cars that will be used during the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics in China. And how Plug Power prepares for its biggest quarter yet, the new hires and the larger loan. Toyota's hydrogen fuel cell Kenworth can re, uh, revolutionize heavy transport. I think I showed that drag race last week on, on last week's show where the Toyota um, heavy truck outraced the uh, diesel truck by almost two to one. Hyundai hydrogen fuel cell SUV re released. Uh, let me see. I already did this. You guys are scaring me. Uh, 2017 ATF power to gas contest. There's rules and guidelines published and you can register online. Hyundai Movis builds a plant for hydrogen car parts. Let me see. Hyundai iX35 fuel cell long-term tests the advantage of hydrogen fuel cells. Hydrogen stations move forward in Brooklyn and the Bronx after gaining conditional approval from the Fire Department of New York. Connecticut company to open one of the country's largest fuel cell projects on Long Island. Trial to phase in hydrogen as fuel begins in the Northwest, up in uh, Toby Kincaid country. And ITM Power PLC um, has a 20 ton a day hydrogen refueling station designed and it's going to be launched in Las Vegas. And ITM is a European company, by the way, to contract pipe. The contracted pipeline exceeds 40 million British pounds, which is equivalent to roughly 53 million American dollars. Hydrogen to be injected into Adelaide's gas grid in a power to get grid trial. And the Peace Boat eyes up fuel cells and batteries for five more eco ships. We're almost there. This is a good newsletter. There's a lot of stuff in here, so I hope you look at it. Can a car with just one person inside travel in an HOV lane? Yes, it can, at least here in Hawaii, if you're, it's an electric vehicle. Let me see. The Army has discovered, this is kind of neat too, it's shown up in some of our um, defense digests that we get here at HCAT. The Army has discovered a new way of uh, making hydrogen. They were working on a aluminized powder for some other use, and they accidentally spilled some water on it, and it started fizzing away. So they tested the gas, the off gas from this thing, and it was pure hydrogen. So they think they have a, a great way of making hydrogen in the field for military use that doesn't re require hauling and storing a lot of stuff. And then my favorite, Hawaii builds its first public hydrogen vehicle fueling station, thanks to Surfco. They even made the international news. Can a car with just one person? I already read that. Okay, down to the last couple of pages. Loop Energy fuel cell range extender for yard trucks is in operation. Hydrogen fuel uh, for the future truck technology letters came out. Canadian Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Association appoints Dr. Andreas Truckenbolt, new CEO. BMW Concept X7 is coming to Frankfurt Auto Show with fuel cell. That's BMW. They're going to be in production here soon in fuel cells. Hydrogen power vehicles are finally taking off, and that's uh, inside Amazon and Walmart warehouses. They're both switching to fuel cell material handling for Amazon and Walmart. That's really important. And that's really important because that will be the beginning of your cross-country network in the United States for deploying hydrogen into the public sector. Amazon and Walmart finally found the use for hydrogen. I think that's going to wrap it up for news. Oh, UK joins France to say goodbye to fossil fuel cars by 2040. I think that um, Shem Lawler would really like that one. He'd like the state legislature to do the same thing. But anyway, there's a lot in that newsletter, tons and tons and tons. And I'm really, really excited that um, the California Fuel Cells Partnership puts it out. So thanks so much uh, for keeping that newsletter coming. And I, I recommend that all of you check that out. Well, we're going to take a quick break here, and we'll come back uh, with our next guest. Um, actually, he was the Intern of the Year Award winner for HCAT. In other words, he was our only intern for the year at HCAT. So we'll be back in 60 seconds with Tyler Hugh. Aloha. 
I'm Tim Apichaw, host for Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic. We identify those areas where we do have problems in the state, but also the show is dedicated to trying to find solutions, not just detail our problems. So join me every other Tuesday on Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm Tim Apicella. Thank you. I'm going to the game and it's going to be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink, but won't be drinking today because I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line, keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way because it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you want to be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that says, let's go. All right, welcome back to Stand the Energy Man on my lunch hour. I warned you it was a lot of stuff that I was going to be reading. So the California Fuel Cell Partnership uh, has got a great, great product full of stories. Now it's time for me to quit hogging the camera and bring in my charming co-hostess, Miss Rachel James, and the winner of this year's HCAT Intern of the Year Award, Mr. Tyler Hugh. Hooray! Hey. Hi. So Tyler, welcome. I, I, we were trying to get you Skyped in, but we only got you on the phone, so we'll throw some pictures of you up so everybody knows what you look like. Uh, that's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you have a cold. Yeah, no, uh, it's, almost, it's almost over, but uh, yeah, kind of. Well, why don't you tell everybody where, you're co where we're talking to you from. You went back to school a couple weeks ago, so... Let everybody know where you're going to school and, and what your major is and all that all the stuff you're doing there. And oh yeah, so I'm right now in the city of Atlanta, Georgia. I'm going to school at Georgia Tech, a second year mechanical engineering major, and I graduated from Punahou, uh, born and raised in Hawaii, and I interned for HCAT in the summer, and now I'm here. Great. I'm gonna let Rachel, let Rachel jump in here and and ask you a couple questions and, and talk a little bit about what you did this summer. Sure, Tyler. I'm going to tell you in advance that the answer to this question is yes. <laughs> Wasn't HCAT the best <laughs> internship experience ever? You bet. <laughs> <laughs> More seriously, yeah. um, I, you and I joked about this a lot. Um, just as an engineering major focusing on communication, I was really excited that you had that focus. So if you could share with our listening audience some of the things that you learned um, just about obviously hydrogen and the things we do at HCAT, but um, how that relates to communication and the importance. Well, actually, going into the summer, I didn't know that much about HCAT or um, clean, much about clean energy in Hawaii at all. But by the end of my time at HCAT, I, I learned a bunch of stuff, uh, both regarding uh, HCAT and skills that I can use later on in life. So I guess where to start? Um, well, I mainly focused on communication. Uh, as an engineer, I think communication is one of my weak points. Uh, personally, communication is one of my weak points. So I really wanted to focus on that this, um, this summer. And I was able to uh, through uh, a presentation and marketing plan uh, and both helped me to develop those communication skills. Yeah, tell us a little bit about the presentation that you put together because uh, you actually had a couple chances to to make that presentation in front of an audience. So what, what were some of the things we actually would like to bring it up but just for the audience we can't bring up the PowerPoint type presentation in its entirety so it's, it's kind of hard to really show it to you but um, it was a great comm tool Great animation, great graphics. I thought, in fact, I thought the fuel cell graphic that was in there was uh, top notch. It was one of the best I've seen. So, why don't you tell us what, uh, how you organized that, how you put it together, and what you plan to do with it in the future, or what you plan to let us do with it in the future? Well, the main thing that the presentation is trying to do is just to um, teach the audience about what HCAT is what they do, uh, their mission, a little bit about the projects they do. And uh, actually before, I wasn't able to find much information about HCAT uh, through the internet. So I think it's a, it's a good way to let people know what HCAT is. Uh, 
the process of making the presen through the process of making the presentation, I I was able to learn a lot of things because I had to do research um, on the company, on the current state of energy initiatives in Hawaii, on different companies that HCAT worked with, and um, all of that I think is is really useful information, whether I'm in Hawaii or here in Atlanta. Um, but hopefully the presentation can be used to teach people a little more about what HCAT does and the work that they do. Great. Awesome. You did some really great work on the presentation, Tyler. Um, and oh. I think it's important to talk about you being a mechanical engineer and learning about clean energy in Hawaii um, and just how that's informed your viewpoints and what you think that will mean um, not only for Hawaii but for your educational and professional progression. Well, I, to be honest, I wasn't actually um, that knowledgeable on clean energy before I uh, joined HCAT. And I think just working, working a lot with clean energy and trans, uh, transportation, I think it's definitely something that I'd be open, with, open to working with. It's an avenue that I, I'm now considering. Um, yeah. I think one of the most impressive things that Tyler actually worked on was uh, a trifold. And, um, and we can probably bring, a, at least we had it on display, we can't show you the whole trifold, but uh, it was a really good product. And I thought for a mechanical engineer, kind of a left brain linear thinker, non-artist type, it actually did really well. And we, I think we gave away about 50 of them during our uh, time over at the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And that was a, a really good piece of work that you did. And so I'm, I was really impressed that an engineer had that much artistic talent, to be quite frank with you. It looked really good to me. It's what happens when oh, we infuse you. you with hydrogen. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your plans for the rest of the semester? What kind of classes do you have this semester? Uh, I'm, I'm taking a lot more uh, mechanical engineering classes this semester, and uh, it's, it's starting to show. The difficulty is getting pretty hard, but it's okay. I'll manage it. Um, and um, I'm still doing RoboJackets, the robotics club here. Uh, we work a lot with BattleBots, and uh, that's going well so far. So, but you, it's good to hear that the the trifold is working out well. Yeah. Are you going to be on the BattleBot show on TV? Uh, we're applying. Okay. So you may or may not see us next season. And what's the secret to your technology? Uh, long long nights. Long. <laughs> nice. yeah. Okay. That's actually one of the shows that I switch off when I get tired of looking at political garbage on the TV at night. I love to watch BattleBots. It's kind of cool. I'll, I'll call you up after this and show you my technology. Uh, if I was making a robot, what it would look like so you can win this thing. <laughs> Sounds good. Besides having it hydrogen powered. Yeah, of course, of course. I think that's all. All righty. Well, Tyler, we wish you good luck over there at school, and I hope we'll see you next summer when you come back to Honolulu, and uh, we'll yeah, get a yeah. little bit more ch time to talk to you and do more things, and uh, maybe you can do another trifold for us and update everything. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for having me. Uh, thanks for being on, and uh, that's gonna wrap it up for us uh, this week on Think Tech Hawaii's uh, Stan Energy Man. I'd like to thank you for joining us. I know it was kind of a, uh, sort of a fried rice filled show, so thanks for hanging with us. And uh, next week we have uh, another great show coming up, and we'll see you then on Friday. Aloha. <laughs>